It's a little bit ironic because there's really no employees here. It's just me and my wife that run this grocery store. Um, this, I'm Ray, this is Felicia, if you're new to this channel. We had a big breakdown on this cooler. We lost a lot of product. We had to get a whole new shipment of cheese. You would never expect to spend two, three thousand dollars on cheese until you own a store. Um, I never thought in my life that I'd be running a place like this. It uh, was a dream come true. And then when you have a breakdown like this, the dream just seems like a nightmare because you have to throw away a lot of food and it's just sad. And then you have to spend $3,000 on cheese. When I was younger, I thought, you know, the most I'd ever spent on cheese was $10. Today it was $3,000. So, yeah, thanks for coming back to this channel if you are a regular subscriber, if you're new. Um, yeah, this is our point of view. We run this grocery store in Canada. It's been seven years. There's been good months, there's been bad months. And surprisingly, after everyone said we'd never succeed in this business, we're still here seven years later and we were able to make a living through this store. So anybody who's ever wanted to be an entrepreneur in a retail space like this, yes, it's risky, it can be done. It, it's risky, it can, you know, become something that doesn't work, but it also can work with the right research, location, customer service, products. There's a lot that goes into this and uh, it's a 24 hour, seven days a week business and there's customers coming in so I'm gonna shut this off. So what have I been doing the last seven to eight years in this store? Basically trying to find things that people want to purchase and trying to get people in the door. So uh, I really built our marketing to a level that attracts people just to come check us out because honestly before a good marketing plan the only people that would shop here are the people that live maybe in the five kilometer radius of this store. And to attract other people, we had to really expand our marketing, which led me into my own marketing business. If you'd like to work personally with me, you can just send me an email and we can set something up for you. I'm really excited to start that business along with this one. So email and link in the description if you uh, want to work directly with me and help your small business grow through a marketing strategy that I can offer you. Now a lot of people don't know this but opening the store not only was stressful because it was opening you know a brand new business but Ray and I were actually planning our wedding at the same time as well. Um, we did get married six months after we opened so I think doing both at the same time was extremely stressful, but we managed to make both things work and um, I'm not going to admit this to him, probably not, but I will definitely miss working with him um, six days a week. You know, um, we not only work together, but of course we go home together to our personal life and I definitely think that I am always going to cherish the time that we did have here together and to be honest it makes me a little bit sad knowing that when we do move on I am going to have to like find a different routine we're both going to have different routines and you know we're gonna have to definitely adjust not you know going to work with each other every single day and I'm gonna tell you something that's a little bit depressing but I tell anyone who's starting a small business Nobody really cares about your business the way you think they do. I'm just, yeah, that's some nice bread here. I'm not saying that anyone's evil or out to get you and, you know, there's some people that don't want to see you succeed. But once you open your doors, you have this feeling that everyone cares about your business. They can't wait to come. Their whole day revolves around your business and you couldn't be further from the truth. The hardest part is getting people to care consistently and having long-term customers that want to come to your store. So this is the biggest battle that we face. Like even me, myself, when I opened the doors, I thought people were like just waiting to flock in. That's just not the case. People have their own schedules, they have their own problems, they have their own places to shop. There's food everywhere. And that hit me like a ton of bricks because I was like, well, you know, I'm here. There's 
10 to 15,000 people that live in this area, why am I getting 80 to 100 customers a day? And it really is a humbling feeling that probably is the biggest life lesson that you could ever face is no one really cares about what's going on in your life. You may seem to think that your problems are the only problems that exist, but trust me, everyone's kind of fighting very similar battles that you are. So take the ego out of the situation. You're just running a small business. You're trying to make a living like everybody else. And you're doing it on your own path, which is, you know, an achievement in itself. Some things that I definitely learned, I don't even know if it's just some things that I could say, because there is a lot of things that I've learned. So one thing, never go into a business that you have no idea, like, on anything about it. So I worked in the food industry business, not grocery, but like food service, and Ray did work in the grocery business before, but I think if, he didn't have that experience I definitely wouldn't be able to open this and he wouldn't either you just there's just certain things that you need to learn in order to open up a business and I think that ultimately um, is a skill and knowledge that you need in order to have that business be successful so a lot of people are business oriented on this channel let me give you some rough numbers if this store doesn't do $30,000 a month in sales, we really don't have much profit. This store has to move a lot of product in order to see a profitable month. So Felicia will try to run $40,000 through this till every single month in order to see some profit. And that's where we're hovering right now. $40,000 a month, $50,000 a month. So it's a very tough time in Canada. The prices of food is really rising. People are having a hard time making ends meet. And uh, honestly, when you have a store that's based on convenience pricing, a little bit more higher end boutique stuff, um, yeah, you're gonna see your sales drop a bit because people simply can't afford to do all of their normal groceries with you or they simply can't come in anymore as much because they're trying to pay their regular bills so this place is a little bit more expensive than a big store obviously we have to have a little bit higher prices because we can't buy in bulk and volume and get those crazy deals that you'll see at big box stores for example if we buy you know one case of watermelon it's 10 watermelon you know they're not going to be as cheap as if I bought a thousand watermelon it's a volume based game from purchasing to selling and you really really need to move a lot of product in order to see a profit in this business so that's one thing that catches people off guard as well like this is not you're not making you know uh, ten dollars twenty thirty dollars a sale you're making 50 cents to a dollar to two dollars to three dollars per item so you have to get people to spend more that's the biggest game in this industry you have to find things that people want to buy that's the science here that's the only thing that matters so I guess it's my turn to explain my experience and my overview of the last seven years in the store it's hard to just pick one word how to describe it so I'm going to have to say that it was probably the hardest thing that I have ever done. Um, frustrating at times, you know, but also very rewarding in so many different ways. I was able to venture into real estate just because of this business. It really opened my eyes to, you know, business in general, but just my actual path in life that I wanted to follow for myself individually. I always had a passion for real estate, but for some reason I never really had the confidence to do it. And being in this business had to like really bring out that confidence in myself, um, dealing with the public of course. Um, we've come across a lot of people throughout this business and you know I'm just thankful for that and you know just having the opportunity to meet all the amazing customers that we have um, especially our regulars um, you know without the support of your regular customers you really wouldn't have a successful business to begin with so in a small store like this you have maybe 30 to 40 different distributors 
and they're not all going to have millions of products. It's a small business, local based businesses support it. So you got your bread guy, you got your produce guy, there's the two produce guys that we use. Then you got your exotic snack guy. So we'll do a lot of different trendy snacks. There's an exotic snack guy. Then you got your bakery guy, your pie guy. He does all of our pies over here, okay? Then, you know, you got a guy that does basically all of your um, drinks and other exotic snacks. Down this aisle, you'll see many, many different snacks. This is one distributor for us, okay? Then we have our ice cream guy. Oh, just one person that does all ice cream and uh, frozen snacks. Then we have our frozen pizza guy. Okay, so there's a lot of different guys and girls that uh, supply this store. Um, now, mind you, there is suppliers that have thousands upon thousands of products. Like this is a grocery guy. He does grocery in general, cans, pick, pickles, spices, um, Italian cookies, stuff like that. But there's a lot of different people that make this place work and that we have to keep on top of to keep the place stocked. Because honestly, one more thing that really makes or breaks your store, if you're inconsistent with having product in stock, people don't really care why you don't have it. They just want it and they slowly, they'll give you one more chance, sometimes they won't, and they just won't come back. It's the silent killer. They'll take a look around, they don't see what they want. A lot of people don't ask. They'll just leave and never come back. There was always doubt in some people's minds. Um, you know, I've had customers tell me and, you know, other business owners saying that they could never work with their spouse. I could work with Ray always, 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 always. Um, you know, we just vibe well. And I honestly, ultimately think it made our relationship a lot stronger. Just because, you know, we deal with stuff personally as in, like as a couple outside of the store but you know we've dealt with a lot here as well so I think it just made us a stronger couple and there's no one else I would rather want to be on a business venture with than Ray. Piece of advice that I is it advice I don't really know if it's advice another thing that I learned is you know just because customers say they want a product doesn't mean that they will be back for it so that was something that ray and i had to really adjust to because when we first opened we were all about trying to gain clientele and we would often buy and purchase products to stock our store with that you know customers would say that they want would want but then we would often not see them again so basically you have to do what is best for your store although yes you do want to you know cater to your customers make sure you're not just going out of your way to you know over purchase on certain products for one specific person who may not even come back ever again another thing that i wholeheartedly believe in is nurturing the customers relationships that you do build so I can tell you that we have had customers shopping here since day one. Um, I've gotten to know them to the point that I know a lot about their personal life. I have them on Facebook. We regularly talk weekly when they come in. We send each other messages on Facebook all the time. Um, it's those people and those regular customers that are going to keep you going. And I'm not saying be fake and just like pretend to have a relationship, but or like pretend to like them but try to build a relationship with them because ultimately they're the ones that are going to support your business and at the end of the day they're going to be the ones that spread the word about your store or your business what's going on so <laughs> i didn't say this but yes working with your spouse can have its challenges especially when you have to go home and share the same household space but Yes, I am. that time last week you told me to F off and you thought I would forget by the time we got home. I don't know if that actually happened, I don't yeah. recall. But, like I said earlier, I wouldn't want to run a business with anybody else. Well, thank you. And this is why I didn't want you to be here. Because I am 
professing my love for you. So overall, I would have to say it has been a great experience. I do not regret any of it. And you know, I want to take what I've learned in this business and use it in my future. So real estate, love it. I'm going to do it until I can't anymore. So hopefully I don't ever have to retire until I die, but we'll see. But I also think that it has opened my eyes to a lot of other things as well. I definitely want to own other businesses in my lifetime. I'm not sure what yet, but I know I will figure it out once I do. And another dream of mine is to actually get into the rental property business. So that is a goal I am working towards, hopefully within the next year or two. But you know, it all stems from here. I learned so much here that I can take with me to my future. And it all just really worked out. So it's the end of our day here. I'm gonna start shutting these lights down. Lucia's gonna get mad because she can't see. But you know what? This is the day in the life of a grocery store owner. Somebody's got to try to run these small businesses, keep the community a little bit different, or else all we have is big box stores. Now, do the little guys usually get squashed like a bug from the corporate giants? Yes. Can there be a corner in the market where you pick up a niche and get some of the leftovers and the crumbs from the big box guys? Yes. Can you make a living from this? Yes. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But uh, you know what? Honestly, I think it beats working in, in an office. For me personally, I wouldn't want to go to countless meetings day in and day out. There's a lot of freedom that comes with being your own boss. So, each their own. Thanks for watching this, guys. Have a good day. Come on, Ryan. Yes, we're doing our closing duties, cleaning, taking things down, shutting all the lights off. Going home. Going home, eating anything that uh, didn't sell today. And uh, yeah, you do get free groceries, so that's pretty cool too.